understand correctly, you are originally from Pittsburgh. So uh, how did you get your start in music and, well, in folk music at that? Probably, it was probably from hearing records, um, <clears throat> you know, hearing like Neil Young, um, you know, hearing locals play playing folk music, playing banjo around me. I actually grew up in a fairly um, isolated area. So I think a lot of, um, a lot of my influences just kind of come from the country atmosphere and you know kind of impoverished you know type of life so um people don't always think think of that when when you think of pennsylvania but it's you know there are country areas everywhere so okay uh, this might be a dumb question but uh <laughs> yeah, go ahead. you're good well, what is the difference, uh, would you say, between like American folk music, then again, maybe between Americana and then maybe country? Oh, good question. Good question. Good question. Um, well, country is, you know, largely the is the root of rock and roll. Um, a lot of times we don't we don't remember that, but you know, country became rock and roll. And uh, Americana is, uh, I think it's more of a melting pot for contemporary music. You know, I think that there is some blues influence in both, but I think that, um, I think Americana is more, it was more of like a contemporary melting pot, if that makes sense. We're like in this weird meta modern world and Americana music is just country in the future I think so yeah so when did you uh first uh pick up an instrument or started singing or maybe when when did you get serious about music oh very young I was so young I knew right away um after I had performed I think maybe like Maybe I was 11 or 12, but I just, I loved, loved, loved performing. And I think I've performed a Simon and Garfunkel tune. And it's just, um, it's just something that's, it's positively affected my life. And I have never wanted to give it up and I never will. And it's just brought me so many good things. So originally from Pittsburgh, but now you are in Nashville, uh, the music city. Yeah. So I, of course, yeah. here have like the fantasy projection of how Music City is. But uh, well, first of all, how did you end up there? Yeah, I mean, I've uh, I definitely went through a lot, a really rocky period. Um, you know, I just uh, coming out of out of my 20s um, was really hard in a lot of different ways. And I was kind of forced to um, decide very early what I was going to do and if I was going to um, move to a place like Nashville or stay put and I just decided that um, you only really have one shot at it and so I decided to move to Nashville um, and um, kind of just kind of just did it. Okay so how is the music scene here? in uh, Nashville from your point of view? You know, here's the country, right? Here's like the US and it's like, here's Nashville. And it seems like everyone visits here. And that's why it's so great because we get everybody wanting to come to Nashville. And so um, there's like, the underground country scene, there's the honky tonk, there's the bluegrass, I mean, you name it. And it's all at your fingertips, which is so special, you know, because I don't think that that happens anywhere else, really. Okay, do you see it more as a, like, a in, uh, like a source of inspiration rather than like a cutthroat competition between musicians? I feel like it's easy to be intimidated 
by the level of talent um, because it is such a high standard of talent. But at the same time, you know, I think the people who really um, understand themselves and their unique style and want to hold on to their unique style are the ones that um, have the best, you know, sustainable careers. Um, that, you know, it, it ends up setting you apart instead of just coming here and conforming to what everyone else does, it's it's important to like hold on to your roots, like where you're from and and continue to to build that rather than trying to get your foot in the door and and compete. You know what I'm saying? So and I have another thing I want to say, Jan, is um I've gotten to be such a so much uh more prolific at my instrument just by being here. So it's given a lot of opportunity to just grow and become like a, a lot better of a, of a player and just a more well-rounded musician. I actually found you through the Magnolia sessions. Uh, can you tell me a bit about your experience with them? Yeah, absolutely. So we were coming off of the pandemic um, Summer had kind of happened and it was um, the fall of 2020 and Dan Black called me and he said, hey, would you like to do this session? It's out outdoors, it's underneath the tree and I have 12 artists that are gonna be participating. And I was like, yeah, of course I'll, you know, I'd love to, to join that group of artists because they're just so incredible. Everyone involved is like, people I look up to. And um, so I brought my banjo and my guitar and a set of songs. And I ended up being pretty happy with, with the outcome. And it's a really special moment uh, that we had there. So <laughs> it's cool that it's on going to be on a CD. And and also in June, of course, comes out your uh, album, Frontiers Woman. Yes. <laughs> yes. First of all, uh, how has the writing process for these songs been? And, you know, what are these seven songs about? You know, they're, they're about me. Uh, <laughs> it's a really autobiographical um, type of album. And uh, they're about traveling across the country. And um, they're about love and, and romance and, and, and music. So it's it's really just a really it's a very American type of album for me, and it's symbolic of uh, it's symbolic of my own life and my own journey. And I thought that uh, Frontiers Woman would be a great name for my first record. Yeah, what's kind of your approach to writing personal things? Because you know, if done wrong, it can get uh, quite uncomfortable. But how do you approach writing? about your personal things with my personal stories that's i mean that's where that's where i get all of my material from um i'm sure some people are different and they like to write about uh other people's lives um but i think i think when it's presented in a way that is poetic and heartfelt. Um, no one really knows that you're talking about them. <laughs> it, could, it could be anything. Uh, and especially the song Old Time Lovers, which is the first single. Um, I mean, that's, it's about a specific event, but I try to make it universal. Like it could be anyone. And um, so yeah, so so my my approach is um, is to just tell my story and and to get it out out there. And it feels better than uh, you know holding it all in, I guess. So as I understand, you produced the album yourself. So uh, how was the recording of this one? 
it was awesome. Um, you know, I directed the musicians, they came in and, uh, and I just, I told them what I, what I needed. And, um, I kind of had a, a blueprint for each song, um, which included fiddle. I definitely wanted fiddle. I definitely wanted banjo. I definitely wanted the bluegrass instruments. Um, so I was fortunate to, to be able to have those incorporated on the record. And after we did that, after we did that, I decided to include uh, more of a modern kind of percussion beat on, on a lot of the songs. And um, I helped guide the, uh, I helped guide the drummer to give me that sound that I wanted. I really wanted it to be powerful and um, make a statement, but also include the traditional side of things. And I think that going into a studio where you're not producing your own record, it's hard to get both of those elements. I think that people expect to hear uh, just strictly purest traditional bluegrass music and that or they expect to hear like rock and roll but I wanted both <laughs> so that's why I just did it all myself <laughs> and I did have help like there were people there who were helping me uh come up with parts and and stuff but it was like my decision for each song so you talked about the importance of kind of finding your own voice or own style uh, how has that process been to you or like, do you feel, are you there yet or is it still ongoing? I feel like right now, having just kind of completed the record, I am in a, a really, like, I feel like I'm, I'm just a ball of clay or like dough and it, my next phase of artistry has not taken shape yet but I keep getting new ideas and I feel like um with time like I, it, it will evolve into the next the next thing but um yeah I don't I don't feel like I have found my solid voice yet but I'm gonna keep making records and discovering that and and just keep writing and seeing what happens how much do you kind of think or plan ahead your uh, future as an artist? Do you have like a three year or 10 year plan? Right now I have about a six month plan. Um, but that includes, um, that includes definitely getting on the road and performing these songs for people and audiences again. And um, <clears throat> so I definitely see touring in the future. And uh, another thing that I want to do is maybe start like an indie side project uh, with electric instruments. Um, maybe not under Angela Autumn, but just another, another band name. Um, so I have lots of ideas on the horizon.